We believe that being a woman who is her own boss is a special type of journey that deserves more visibility in today's society. The problems we face can be and should be faced together. We found each other through our shared journeys. Resilience is the only answer to fulfill the dreams and callings of our lives. My Girls is an intimate look into the creative hustle through the lives of women who are educated, successful, spirited, and independent. We decided to embrace the power of creativity to empower the world and ourselves. It is time for you to join us and find a community dedicated to helping you soar. You deserve the right to dream big, design your success, and trust your process. Welcome. You are the pilot of your own destiny. You are a flag girl, and you believe in what you dream. Welcome to Fly Girls. I'm your pilot, S. Ladybug. On this show, we take a creative look into the lives of women who are beautiful, educated, spirited, successful, and independent. Today, we'll be co-piloting with the lovely Ryan Nicole. Thank you. Thank Hello. you for inviting me. Yes. Thank you so much for coming. I'm excited. We are super excited. I'm excited to introduce you to everyone who's watching. I'm excited. To everyone be needs all. to know about you. <laughs> so we're going to just start off by just telling us who you are, right. where are you from, all right. where we're headed on this creative journey. Okay. Well, my name is Ryan Nicole. I'm from Oakland, California, uh, a large part of my identity. Oh, like, <laughs> yeah, being from the <laughs> town is extremely important to me. Um, I'm a mom, I'm a, a wife. Uh, those are probably my most recent identifiers, but mm -hmm. um, you know, if you couldn't tell, I'm a black woman. <laughs> but I'm an artist. Beautiful black woman. Well, thank Hello. You. Thank you. <laughs> I'm an artist. Oh, I call myself the 4A, so artist actress, athlete, activist. Um, and those are, those are my vocation, um, but also my passion. So what in your life has led you to um, pursuing this creative entrepreneurship and sharing all this creativity with the world? Yeah. Um, you know, I grew up in a household that was very traditional, and um, my parents, probably not dissimilar from anybody else's parents, were telling me, you know, you got to get a good government job. <laughs> and so, um, good benefits. Get with the benefits. Yeah. We got <laughs> dental, visual, you know, all these things. Um, and I went to school with that objective. Mm -hmm. I went to school, I ran track, got a scholarship, went to college. Um, and my, my studies were uh, directed towards pre law. So I had a sociology and political science major, mm -hmm. took my LSAT, submitted uh, applications for schools and all of that. And then once I graduated, I realized I just really wasn't ready to go back to school. Yeah. I wanted to learn more about the real world. And most importantly, I wanted to come back home. And, um, you know, Stanford wasn't letting me in. And I was like, <laughs> okay, well, let me, let me get my game up, you know, work a little while and maybe I'll reapply. Mm -hmm. um, but I really wanted to get back home. Um, in, in the time that I was coming back to school, our murder rate was ridiculous. It was like... 140 or somewhere between 127 and 140 somewhere in there and I always felt when I was growing up that um, young folks missed uh, we really missed having the age group between like 24 to like 34 mm -hmm. that population was missing in Oakland and I thought that had a large part to do with why there was so much violence um, and so I wanted to come home and test my theory that if I, I move back and I encourage some of my peers to move back and reinvest in the city that made us so dope, mm -hmm. uh, perhaps, you know, we might have an effect on how young people saw themselves, how they saw their trajectory, how they saw what their possibilities and opportunities in life might be. Mm -hmm. um, and if they could see themselves not only outside of Oakland, but they could see Oakland outside of Oakland, you know? Um, and so I came back and uh, instead of doing my standard studies, I kind of went into the nonprofit world, into mm -hmm. public policy, shaping policy, then got directed into running a nonprofit, a youth nonprofit, um, and uh, was an executive director of a creative youth nonprofit for a while before I realized, like, you know, they don't need me sitting in a position to administer the art, they need me in a position to speak what needs to be said. Um, and to be I present. To be present, mm -hmm. have all these opinions and, you know, um, modifying these opinions into policy or modifying these opinions into an administration isn't it. I need to be more direct. 
and so I became an artist. I'm, I'm a firm believer of don't talk about it, be about it. Right. Can't complain about what's on the radio if you're not trying to put something on the radio. That's absolutely you correct. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I, you know, I knew that what was missing, I knew from the young people who were talking to me, and I say young people, we were like four years apart, but um, from the young people that were talking to me at the time, they were like, you know, we don't see us on the radio, mm -hmm. or you know, on the TV screen. We don't see real reflections of ourselves on right. the screen. So, you know, I'm gonna get out here, I'm gonna sell drugs, or I'm gonna get out here and I'm gonna shake my tail because that's what's, that's how you make it. Mm -hmm. And I was um, expressly focused on being a counter day artist today. So I guess that kind of speaks into um, the next question of who you feel like your core audience would be for yeah. um, your plethora of things that you do. I yeah, know you said you yeah. call yourself the polymyth. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> just, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. that just, creates a whole, whole another infrastructure and whole another vision of, you know, just who you are. So yeah. with that under being understood and for everyone who's watching, give them an idea of like who you feel like your core audience is and who it has been over the course of time. And yeah. the, have you seen it change? You yeah, know? it has changed. Um, but I will say just most directly, my core audience is, is me. <laughs> Anybody who is like, <laughs> you know, who I think looks like me or identifies like me, um, so young-ish black women, mm -hmm. it's my primary audience. And then everything flows from there. I'm not exclusionary. I don't have a problem with everybody being down. But that's who I'm talking to because that's the most authentic I can, you know, it's the most authentic experience <coughs> I can speak about, being right. a black woman. Mm -hmm. I can't really draw from being a man or being of another race or being of, you know, a different economic standpoint, you know. And when I do, then I'll be speaking to a broader range of people. Right. So, until Absolutely. Such point. Yeah. So as you've been on this journey and moving forward, what have been some of the things that have been misconceptions for you in your own personal journey? Mm. Meaning? Meaning, you know, you went from going to school, yeah. going to be a lawyer, yeah. making a decision that, you know what, I need to invest in my community a little yeah. bit more. I'm going to move back home. Yeah. And now I'm the centerpiece in the community. Yeah. Um, just taking that journey, mm -hmm. coming from a traditional household myself, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. calling and telling my parents, hey, guess what, am I going to medical school? Right. <laughs> was an easier conversation, it turned out, but uh -huh. the cycle of, of conversations that I had to go through before I even got to that point, right. you right. know? So for you, what, what did that journey look like for you? Yeah, probably really similar, you know? I had a lot of those conversations in my own mind. Um, I had to legitimate what it was that I thought that I wanted to do, mm -hmm. you know, um, even if it was just trying things out to figure out what my path was. And I had to give myself enough confidence to be able to ask. I thought I had to ask permission. Yes. You know, <laughs> I thought I did not only of my parents, that was the first mm -hmm. barrier. Um, but once I asked them, they were like, well, you know, it's your, it's your life. At this point, you're 20 something, it's your life. Yeah. Um, and I realized after talking to them who I thought was uh, my greatest hurdle, I didn't have to ask anybody else permission mm -hmm. to be what I wanted to be or to, you know, really strike it out and find um, my way out there. You know, other misconceptions, well, I think that was like the foundational one. So when I went into spaces where I wasn't traditionally seen, which for hi a hip hop MC, you know, you don't see, a, you didn't, didn't see a lot of black women holding the microphone. Um, you know, and you certainly didn't see them with their clothes on holding yeah. the microphone, you know what I mean? Or saying the things that I was saying. But I realized I don't have to ask permission to be in this space. Mm -hmm. First of all, I grew up in the culture. It's mine. You know, I'm entitled to it. Um, secondly, I, uh, uh, this voice is, whether they know it or not, whether the cipher of men knows it or not, they want this voice. Mm -hmm. They really do, and they want this presence. Um, the balance has to be struck. And I guess I'm going to play that role, you know? And so I think, you know, once I got past the misconception that, oh, I need to ask if I could be here, mm -hmm. you know, I need to ask if I could be this. Once I got past that, it was all steam ahead. You know? Right. And so ongoing through the, through the journey, because yeah. it's always going to be a journey. Of always. Some type, That's right. Especially when you step out on your own. Yeah. And you have all these ideas of things you're going to do and you figure out. Ooh, it didn't work out that way, but it's going <laughs> right. to work out because right. 
I'm passionate about That's it. It's right. happening. Yeah. And, you know, even getting to that point where you're there, yeah. now that you're there, yeah. and oh, you're making am these. I am I there? I mean, it's, it's always <laughs> going to be a climb, yeah. but I, I call them like intersections That's of some type, right? You have a pit stop you get into, mm -hmm. you see this mountaintop that you know you want to get to. Yeah. You run into people that you collaborate with. Yeah that happens yeah you may have to leave it behind but they was meant for something that's right you know and so as moving forward now mm -hmm. um some of the things that have matured you in you know like your career mm -hmm. matured you in you know entrepreneurship for mm -hmm. instance mm -hmm. because you know like outside of it being personal experience would be outside of it being a money battle mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a spiritual <laughs> battle it is it you is. know because most people have this concept of, okay, you don't have a boss, you have an easy life, but yeah. depending on what kind of service you're doing, your clients, your audience, yeah. whoever you're serving is your boss. That's right. Because you're serving a need of some type. That's right. And so for me, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm more so interested in just knowing from you, what has that looked like for you? Because I know that's what it looks like for me. Yeah, but, you know? which uh, it's not dissimilar. Um, it's been a, it's two, two major words are popping up for me right now, and it's surrender and faith. I think I got into creative entrepreneurship with the notion that I would control things. Mm -hmm. And I realized, oh, actually, <laughs> I need to release. I need to surrender because this thing, this thing that motivated me to move into a realm that was unconventional was not my choosing anyway. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's a calling on my life. And so this isn't something that I, ha I can be in the driver's seat with. This is something I have to surrender to, understand it, and then understand my place in it. Um, so surrender was a big, big um, lesson for me. Uh, and it's an ongoing daily lesson. Like this isn't something that I'm controlling. Um, and then the second thing was faith. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think that, you know, one goes before the other. They just, they've been equal partners in my maturation in this process. Um, Cause as you say, it's a spiritual thing. You know, it is my, my money, <laughs> My, I have to pray about my money all the time. I had to pray about my money when I had a job. I had to pray about my money when, you know, my parents were taking care of me. I'm a black woman from Oakland, California. You know, money is is a big deal, mm -hmm. you know. And so, um, yeah, it has to be a faith-based endeavor mm -hmm. to, to say, one, I'm entitled to this purpose, but I'm also entitled to the resources that are going to fund this purpose. Um, that are going to allow me to be balanced in this work mm -hmm. um, where I'm not giving my entire self and I can't afford, I, I don't have the space or energy to even live or, or celebrate, you know, mm -hmm. uh, this, this, uh, this labor. Um, and yeah, and that God will provide, you know, all in all, God will provide that this is the thing that he told me to do. So this is the thing that I believe he will provide provide for you know well congratulations because you're thank doing you. it well thank you what i've heard you say from the beginning is that new titles are you're married and yeah. you're a mother yeah yeah and so throughout this journey you've been able to do something that most people say you can't right right yeah it's been a blessing um you know finding the balance between being a mother and being a wife and being an artist has been a mental challenge because in my head i'm like oh my god i need to be there i need to be there and i do um, but somehow, even in the 24 hours of the day, even though those are finite, <laughs> somehow, you know, I manage, yeah. you know, and it, it is, it's by the grace of God that everybody's boxes are checked and, um, you know, I'm flying by the seat of my pants, but I'm a fly girl, right? Mm -hmm. You're a fly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> fly girl. Yeah. And it's solid proof that, you know, whatever you put on your mind to do, you can actually do it without restriction. I believe that. You cause your own restriction. You do. Right. Yeah, <laughs> you do. So um, what are some of the things you would tell a, a woman or let's just talk about the women. Let's talk about Let's just talk yeah, about the women about the who are in your position, who have goals to doing music, being an MC, yeah. just being in front of a mic. Yeah, yeah. I, what I, would you tell them? Like, what? what where would give I me a piece. Go? What is it? What? Yeah, I would tell them, uh, do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I think a lot of us. I, I used to host the open mic, and I'd see who was in the room. You know, and I, I think I can discern what is happening for with people and for people at a different time at any given time. And I would see who was in the room, and people would show up early, and it was always groups of women with notebooks. And it was, I mean, out of the 10 women, let's say, one of them would get the courage 
over a year's amount of time to get on the mic and speak. But all of them were filling up their books and their notepad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I would finally query, like, what, why, why did you just choose now to get on the mic? Well, I didn't think that, and, oh, I wasn't sure, and I didn't think I was, you know, and all these insecurities um, that are all self-inflicted insecurities. Yeah. Like, and then they would get on the mic and they would say something so profound and so needed in the moment that it was like you've been holding all of that for so long. Mm -hmm. So, you know, for every every woman, everybody who endeavors to to do something, I would say do it. Don't wait. You know, there's nothing, like you said, there's nothing holding you back but you. Um, and, you know, there's no time like the present. I know all those things sound cliche, but it's true. Right. You know, it's really true. Absolutely. Yeah. So on that note, we gotta pay some bills. Okay. So we'll be right back <laughs> and we'll still be co-piloting with the lovely Ryan Nicole. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome back to Fly Girls. I am your pilot, S. Ladybug, and I'm still co-piloting here with Ryan Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna move into a segment I like to call getting your roll on. Okay. Everybody get the roll on. So those who know me know that I crochet and I have a fluctuation oh, with yarn. Okay. And here we're gonna give you pink. Okay. You know you pink. All right, I do. Um, so we are gonna be making yarn balls. So you wanna find the beginning? Oh Lord, here we go. We gotta put this on tape. <laughs> <laughs> Just you can pull it. There yeah, it is. There it goes. I found it. So one of the great things about making yarn balls, I find this is actually very therapeutic. Okay. Um, and the reason being, you almost have this psychology of wrapping your emotions into a wall. Mm, right? Okay. All and right. So who knew? I didn't know that when I was 12 years old, learning how to crochet, yeah. kind of like when I was telling you a little bit earlier yeah. when we were talking, um, sitting down and spending time with my grandmother and her friends, that this would be my saving grace when mm. I'm going through something. Come on. You know, so you're right handed or left handed? I'm right handed. Okay. So you're going to wrap this on your left hand. Okay. Come on. And we're going to wrap in the middle like five times. Okay. Is it one, two? You're too fast. Three, four, five. Okay. <laughs> you actually have a little practice because you're yeah. athlete. So if you ever had to wrap your ankle. I did, actually. See? So, yeah, okay. Uh-huh. All right. And so you're going to take that off, and then right. you are going to kind of like have this straight piece. All right. And you're going to wrap like five times in the middle, make a little bow. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Look mm -hmm. at me, guys. And then you're going to turn those edge pieces over uh -huh. and you're just going to start like kind of wrapping okay. to make like a circle. Oh, and you okay. want to just keep on like kind of like rotating. Okay. Okay. I feel it. All right. I'm making a yarn ball. Yep. <laughs> Look at me. And you want to um, kind of like keep okay. on rotating around like okay. a spherical All right. shape. I'm learning new skills. Look at that. So while we're doing this, this is a great moment to talk about um, women in leadership. Yes. Okay. What's your opinion? The current women in leadership? No, just women in leadership, period. Oh, it or needs if, to happen. Or if we want to talk about current women Girl, in leadership. Girl, well, the current right, women you know. in leadership. <laughs> there are some that I really revere and I think are doing an excellent job from where I stand. Mm -hmm. You know, Barbara Lee. Yes. Uh, Maxine Waters. Mm -hmm. You know, these are women who I really appreciate. Michelle Obama, of course, um, even though she's not as prominent in the spotlight. But there are other women who I believe are sailing us down the river right now. And, um, you know, it's, it's really disappointing because, you know, we hope that we put them in these positions to, uh, to represent, yeah. you know, the needs and the desires of the oppressed because they stand, they, by proxy of their gender, are in a naturally oppressed position yeah but these uh, are facts these are facts yeah i like how you kicking down facts today i'm trying <laughs> <laughs> my emotion ball is getting tense <laughs> but that's that's the is that, that it okay. that is what this is okay this ball uh -huh. is representation of your current emotions or emotions that you carry ah, right okay so the goal normally with making yarn balls is to be able to transfer ah and not hold them come through i like it yes. oh, let me keep rolling <laughs> there is a woman in um there are a couple women in leadership locally for me that i really appreciate a lot of women who i've talked to recently I, politics again political science was one of my majors and politics is one of my i wouldn't call it a passion but it is one of the fields of study that i appreciate mm -hmm. 
And you have to if you care about your life. Right. You know, I mean, at this point and just to be so direct, but Come that's on, keep it 100. These are just facts. These I mean, just just, facts. This, this is not only roll on. This is a direct. This facts. is real <laughs> fact right now. <laughs> <laughs> but there are a few women who have who have stepped up and, you know, they don't have traditional political backgrounds. And they've said, you know, there are some needs in our city in Oakland uh, that need to be answered by people who live real lives, you mm -hmm. know, who aren't focused on becoming governors or moving up the political chain. Um, you know, folks that just really care about the people that live in the city, yeah. which is what our most local representatives are supposed to be about. Um, and so I appreciate those women. You know, one of them is Kat Brooks, another one um, that I've had personal experiences with of integrity is um, Lynette McElhaney. Mm -hmm. Another woman who I spoke with last week for the first time. Uh-oh, your emotions are rolling. <laughs> they are rolling all <laughs> over the place. You see this? Look at that metaphor. <laughs> <laughs> all over the place. I spoke with a woman um, at the Pride Festival last week, and she, uh, her name is Pam Harris. And just, I've never met her before, never read her platform or anything, but what she was saying about stepping up about being about it not talking about it but being about it not complaining but getting into the work i just appreciate that yeah you know? there's another woman named candace elder who has not run for political office she's doing a she has a project called the east oakland collective so you know e oakland has a homelessness problem yeah they do and uh she lives in a community where the homelessness became rampant over the last two years Gotcha. And instead of sitting idly by and complaining about it or watching or even going to um, she went to city council meetings and found that these aren't the people who are going to make the change. I am. Gotcha. So, she, so real quickly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sorry. Um, fly girl. Fly girl. Who's the flyest out of all of them? Present past or present? Oh, fly girl. I mean, Michelle Obama's pretty fly. <laughs> she's pretty fly. Yeah. I think she's bomb. I. Yeah, I mean, she's got style, she's got grace, she's got amazing intelligence, she's got power, you know, you you could tell by the way Barack looks at her. You, hello. Come on, she wields her womanly. Come, come through, Black yes, Love. Yes, her womanly power <laughs> for the good of the people, and that's that's what it's about, you know. Cool. Yeah, she's fly. So, Fly Girl. Mm-hmm. I made something for you. You did? Oh, I'm so honored. Okay. I made something for you. Is it an emotional ball? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. You might be an emotional ball after. I might. Let me oh, Let's pull I'm this sweating. thing out. All right. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What? No. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm hitting my microphone. What? Oh, man. What? Girl, this is amazing that's a yarn movement official <laughs> heck yes did you know i was gonna wear cream today i did not when you walked in i said oh look at look at god oh my oh my god there's floored. a that one more thing beautiful. in there i think okay i did see it but i had to yeah oh, so it has the signature granny square on the back Beautiful. Look at that, Joe. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> that is beautiful. Oh yes. I'm done. You guys have to take take my mic off because I'm yelling right now. <laughs> yeah. Made you look made you look tassel earrings. You, you have so to have much. them go with your jacket. Thank you so much. <laughs> Basos, when I get done Basos, with this Basos, microphone, Basos. I'm giving you hugs and kisses. Thank you so much. Yes. This is beautiful. You're welcome. Oh, I'm honored. Yeah. Thank and you. And we so have much. to take a break. So <laughs> let's pay some bills. We'll be back. Thank you. And when we come back, you're going to hear from the lovely talent of Ms. Riley Nicole. Oh, man. So you be ready. Yeah. Oh, I'm juiced. Heck <laughs> yeah. That is lit. That's what I was on this morning. You are awesome. Welcome back, folks. I am the pilot, S. Ladybug, and we're here with Fly Girls. And our Fly Girl of the day that we've been co-piloting all day is Ryan Nicole. She's getting ready to lace us up right now. And I hope you guys are ready because I'm ready. I peep the numbness grow like a fungus in my town. 
Then I examined all the damage. Savages became the habit. Or else you scattered like the roaches and rats, the preyed upon rabbits attacked by snakes in their own habitat. An avalanche descended. Outsiders recommended what we eat, where we shop, the way we hip hop. Invaded the block, yo. It wasn't nothing we could say to them. Looking dumb if we try to debate with them, cause look, y'all. We gave it up like a prom night. By killing everything we created, we hate it if it's not white. Tell me I'm lying. Divide and conquer, inspire, cause our fists lost the grip to raise it up. We too tired. A cowardice? We powerless with our opinions. Fork tongues, they tell no truth, they only cause division. So what's the mission? To tell the kids then, nothing to give them but memories of home. That's no safe place to live in. Give me some room, can I have my own space? A safe place for me to make my maneuvers. Sweet space, free my mind. Take time, realign, falling back to the future. A force of habit, nomadic. Sense of space is sporadic. That's why we beef with organic. Ain't been whole since the passage. They flip our home like gymnastics. We just so happy to have it. We learn to bend like italics. They mow us over like grasses. Expatriate our black asses. Might drag our feet, but no static. Had a flair for dramatics. Now we just pseudo-climactic. Passive defeat be they tactic. We just eat what they hand us. Oh, thank you, massa. I'm famished. End up with various cancers, advances in fashion. How did I end up rapping? Doc got degrees, but some chances to affect the true circumstances, the way we think, what we believe, how we perceive and name it success. So I put the S on my chest. And yes, a lot sport the dress code. A hero for the people, but they in Depeche mode. Personal Jesus, costume nemesis, disguise and evil, rationalize, fantasize, romanticize, and our upheaval. My hands are rough like a man, the callous Alice we're in. Wonderland ain't for ten, no place to call motherland. She bastardizes a kin, turn around and blame it on them. On her I'll never depend, that kind of help be my end. But I've been working the land, learn how to plant, grow, and tend. I use my talents therein till freedom is evident. Said I've been working the land, learn how to plant, grow, and tend. I use my talents therein till freedom is evident. Some room, can I have my own space? Safe place for me to make my maneuvers. Sweet pace, free my mind, take time, realign, falling back to the future. Give me some room, can I have my own space? A sweet pace for me to make my maneuvers. Sweet space, free my mind, take time, realign, falling back to the future. much for closing thank us you. out yeah, um if you all are interested in following up with ryan nicole please tell us your miss ryan nicole so at ms ryan nicole um on instagram if twitter facebook um and then my website www.missryannicole.com thank you so much thank sis. you thank you we'll see you guys later next time it'll be someone else co-piloting with me but always fly girls stepping in and we're saluting you we're out Thank <laughs> you.